Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Social Notes. Just in case you were new here, my name is Latasha and I post videos about social media, building a business, internet culture, and things like that. I post a video at least once every single week. And this series in particular is all about social media news and updates that have happened over the last month or so to platforms that we love the most. So let's start with kind of a tame one. We're talking about Instagram. So Instagram is adding branded content tags to IGTV. Now I've talked a lot about IGTV in this series since it is kind of an emerging feature of Instagram and it has seen growth in viewership over the past few months, especially since they started rolling out the preview to feed options. I know that's really encouraged me to use IGTV a lot more and I've seen a lot more success with it. So they are taking things to the next level and they're really trying to encourage brand partnerships on IGTV by adding branded content tagging capabilities to the platform. So if you already have the branded content feature, you'll be able to tag brands that you're partnering with in your IGTV videos. Now I think this is a great move and just something interesting to keep in mind whether you're an influencer or you are a social media manager, freelancer, influencer, manager, that kind of thing, who is looking to build connections with influencers because it's just getting more eyes on your content. There was no way to do this before. Previously, you would have to click into the kind of description box of IGTV and link something, but now you'll be able to have a nice little tag that allows you to click over to the sponsors stuff. Now, similar to Instagram, I think we talked about this a few weeks ago, but Facebook is going to start testing hiding likes on the platform. So they're rolling out the first series of tests in Australia. So we'll have to stay tuned to them to see how they like it and how it's working. But essentially they're going to just be gathering some feedback about whether or not people still are encouraged to like content when the likes are hidden. And what Jimmy Ramo, a Facebook spokesman said is that the site wanted to be a place where people felt comfortable expressing themselves. So again, I think that Facebook, their whole shtick, their whole business model is that they want people to have fun on the platform and want to spend large amounts of time on the platform. When people feel happy, when people feel like they're surrounded by friends and building community, they stay on the platform, which in turn earns them more money. So that's what this is really all about. And I'm really curious to know what you guys think about likes on Instagram or on Facebook, do you guys care that you can't see likes or is that something that's important to you? I think that likes have definitely become some type of social currency in our culture. And I'm still kind of torn on whether or not I think that this is a good idea or not. So YouTube, let's talk about YouTube. This is a little bit controversial and let me know if you would like me to do a full video on this because I have a lot of opinions and I do think that they're a little bit unpopular. So I'm a little scared to do it, but let me know if you'd like to see a full video. YouTube CEO apologizes over verification removal, admits that they missed the marks. Okay. I'm going to try to condense this into a couple of minutes. Basically, uh, one day I saw that a lot of people I follow were freaking out because they were losing their verification badges. So YouTube sent out an email a, f a few days ago now, letting creators who had the verified check mark next to their profile know that for most of the creators, it would be going away. Basically, the check mark was only going to be reserved, essentially, long and short, you can read the full articles, always open up the description box and read the full articles, but long and short of it is, it was pretty much going to be catered more towards companies and celebrities. People who met a certain set of criteria, some of that criteria included being recognizable off the platform of YouTube and um, having been written about in the press and things like that. So essentially companies and celebrities were going to keep the badge. All the other you know, famous YouTubers were going to lose it at the end of October. There was mass freak out <laughs> on Twitter and I'm sure YouTube's inboxes and things like that. And they actually went ahead and reversed the decision. So YouTube creators who have the verification badge are not going to have to appeal it or anything anymore. They're going to be able to keep it. So again, it raises an interesting question. One, does the verification badge even matter? Because the verification badge on its own doesn't give these creators anything special. It doesn't help them with monetization. It doesn't help them with any type of anything at all. It is basically just kind of one of those vanity metrics. They talk about those a lot. So again, I'm interested to see what you guys think. I mean, I'm happy that YouTube listened to the creator community, but I personally have some opinions on it. So yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think.
Instagram, again, Instagram is implementing new restrictions on diet and cosmetic surgery ads. So this has come after Instagram sat down with some mental health professionals and people who know their stuff. The quote, Instagram will be restricting posts for users under 18 years old that promote the use of certain weight loss products or cosmetic procedures and that have an incentive to buy or includes a price. The new policies are going to be implemented this week. And I think it's an interesting turn of events. I think part of me thinks this is a good thing because I do think that, you know, Instagram has been criticized for its effect on mental health for a long time. And I think this is definitely a step in the right direction when it comes to that stuff, especially for young people. But on the other hand, it does raise kind of an interesting question about censorship, I think. At what point do you draw the line? At what point is a product considered a weight loss product? I think not everything is super black and white and I can see some companies maybe getting trapped in that restricted status that don't necessarily belong there or Instagram creators who make workout videos or healthy eating videos could maybe get kind of lumped in with a weight loss product that that isn't necessarily. So it does kind of concern me from that front. I think that as freelancers, as social media people, influencers, creators, whatever, we're gonna have to be creative when it comes to, you know, if you do have a product like this, or if you are trying to market it, you're gonna have to get creative. And just like you do with Facebook ads, Facebook ads don't allow you to advertise certain medical procedures and health things and things like that. So again, let me know what you guys think. And the last thing I wanna talk about is about LinkedIn. So LinkedIn had their conference, LinkedIn Talent Connect last week, and they brought up a really interesting point, and that's about the network gap. So according to them, more than 70% of professionals get hired at companies where they already have a connection. So I think this is important, and I think this is something that just isn't talked about a lot. I know that when I was looking for my first job here where I am, I was raised two and a half hours away, so I knew nobody here, and it was challenging to find a job. It was intimidating. I would get passed over for jobs and find out, oh, they had an aunt who worked at the company, and that's why they got that promotion over me, or they you know, used to work for somebody, and that's why they got the position that they got. And it was challenging, for sure, and I think that's something that we don't get talk, talk about enough. LinkedIn says that networks matter a lot, but like opportunity, they're not distributed equally and are built over time. There are three key factors that contribute where you grow up, where you go to school and where you work. So um, basically they are asking their community to take what they're calling the plus one pledge and intentionally share their time, talent and connections with someone outside of their network. And they're starting this whole hashtag campaign so you can follow along, see what people are doing to get outside of their network when they're looking to recruit talent. So I just thought this was interesting. I mean, it's not like technology related, but I do think it is interesting if you are somebody who is hiring for a company and using social media to recruit. I think it's really easy to just you know, go to your connections and start posting things, but it is important to get into other communities. And I think that this will help close a lot of gaps. So that's it for this episode of Social Notes. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of some of these stories, what surprised you, what interested you, what you're excited about. And of course, make sure to click the subscribe button and also ring that bell icon that will let you know every time that I post a new video so you won't miss a thing. I'll see you in the next one. and. Thank you to my patrons for making these videos possible as well. I'll have my Patreon link down below if you would like to join us over there. Bye.